Okay, welcome back to my channel. This is a used oil analysis from Blackstone Labs. And uh, the oil that was tested was Chevron Dello 680F 10W30. This is my own oil analysis that I had uh, sent over to Blackstone Labs to get tested for my truck. Because as you know, I have been using the new Chevron Dello 680F motor oil. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to go into the summary from Blackstone Labs, kind of go over the numbers, um, and just kind of give my overall thoughts on this oil. So before I do, I, I want to briefly touch on my observations uh, over the last 14,200 miles that I ran this oil. When I changed the oil out, my first oil change around 5,000 something, something, something miles. I don't remember exactly. Maybe 5,500, 5,200. I, I don't really remember. Somewhere around there, right? You know, you, you put in the new oil, you check the fill levels, and it's full, and you go about your business. And then typically when I have changed my oil, you know, there's usually, you know, I, I've used a little bit of oil. So instead of the oil being at the full mark, it'll be somewhere in the safe zone maybe halfway down, you know, but it's, it's in the safe zone, right? And then when I change the oil and then I put the used oil in the old containers, there's usually about 11 or 11 and a half quarts of oil. Not in the case with this new Chevron Della, at, from my experience, this is with my truck, okay? I changed the oil, the, the break-in oil from factory at around 5,000 X number of miles. I added the Chevron Della 680F, I ran it for 14,200 miles, and I would periodically check um, every couple of weeks where the oil is on the dipstick. And every time I would check, it was always at the full mark. And even at 14,200 miles on this oil, the oil still read full on the dipstick. It wasn't above it, and it wasn't below it. It was at full, which I found to be kind of interesting. I was kind of shocked. I was like, usually by the time I get to the time I'm going to change my oil, it'll be somewhere in the safe zone, like halfway up the dipstick, right? On, on, the, on the safe zone. But this remained full. So I drained the oil out and then I dumped the oil in the old containers. And sure enough, like I, I added 12 quarts at the beginning and I ended up removing 12 quarts. Like it, with 12 quarts in three jugs of oil, three, these one gallon jugs. And we're, you know, the oil level is to equal, you know, four quarts per jug. That's where it was in all three jugs, 12 quarts. And I was like, wow, that's, I was shocked. I didn't use any oil, which is unusual, right? I don't know if that has anything to do with Chevron Dello, but I found it to be very interesting because I've always used either Shell Rotella or Valvoline Premium Blue. And every time I changed the oil, it would always be somewhere at, like in between uh, low and full, but always in the safe zone on the dipstick. I found that to be very interesting. Okay, so with that little note, I'm going to just kind of read the summary from Blackstone Labs. Okay. Again, so this is 21 Ram 2500. I have 14,200 miles on this oil. And they go on to say, the extra metal and silicon are almost certainly wear in material and silicone based sealers and lube. Once those clear out, your reports should look more like universal averages for the 6.7 Cummins, which are based on oil run for 8,000 miles. You are running that new 680F Della, which has an interesting additive package that includes potassium. We know that there, we know that's where it's from, but potassium can show coolant as well. So thanks for noting the exact blend. A 1.2 TBN doesn't show much additive left. Stick with the 14,000 miles and check back for progress. Okay. So you can see here, 14,200 miles on this oil. I changed the oil out at 19,607 miles. Sample date is March 12, 2022. I didn't add any oil 
right? I didn't have to add oil throughout the process, this 14,200 miles. Again, it always stayed at full, which was shocking. Okay, so aluminum, three. Chromium, two. Iron, 59. Copper, 28, which is a little high, right? But they say it's, you know, part of the breaking process. Lead, zero. Tin, one. Molly, 1,061. Nickel, zero. Magnesium, two. Silver, titanium, both zero. Potassium, four. 408, boron 285, silicon 27, sodium 10, calcium 511, magnesium 196, phosphorus 109, zinc 133, um, barium 2, um, viscosity at 210 degrees Fahrenheit 66, value should be between 58 and 66, so actually that's like spot on. Um, Viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius, 11.8 should be between 9.7 and 12.2, so it's spot on. It's right where it needs to be. Flashpoint, 430, needs to be greater than 415, so we're good there. Fuel dilution percentage, we're less than 0.5, should be 2.0, should be less than 2.0, so we're like good. We're, that's like spot on, like we're good. Antifreeze, zero, water, zero, insolubles, 0.3. Should be less than 0.6, so we're good there. TBN 1.2 should be greater than 1.0. So I want to touch on this TBN here. It's low, but the way oil analysis is done, it's done testing like phosphorus and zinc, right? And I think some other ingredients. But because the Chevron Dello, their additive package is radically different than the typical oil. They their main proponents is not phosphorus and zinc. They have a little bit, like we're talking like these levels, like it's really low. But their um, main proponents of the ingredients, which I think is proprietary, right? So they don't like, it's like a secret. They don't let everybody know exactly what it is. But I know after speaking with them, like Molly, it's got high concentrations of Molly, which would explain this. Put, it's got high concentrations of potassium and even Blackstone Labs, they annotate that, right? Uh, it's got extra boron um, and I think extra calcium. Like these are part of the additive package uh, with the new 680F, and then very low phosphorus and zinc, like very, very low. So after speaking with Blackstone Labs, like they acknowledge that they don't have a way to really accurately test TBN because the additive package in this new 680F is just radically different. They acknowledge that. I spoke to them in depth over the phone. They acknowledge that. And they said that they may, as, as if more and more samples of this oil come in, which I plan to be sending more and more samples, they, they are thinking about, or they will, or something to that effect, develop a, a way to accurately test TBN. Until then, they're using their traditional methods, testing the phosphorus, zinc, and I think some other ingredients, and that's why it comes to be so low. This could very well be higher. Don't really know because you know Blackstone Labs is using old technology, their traditional methods of testing TBN. I also contacted Chevron Dello and they said the same thing. And they actually recommended like a third party that they use to test TBN because they 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 test this new package. But um, I think it was going to be more expensive. I didn't want to do that. I was like, I'll just stick with Blackstone Labs. And I think the other method using Chevron's like third party would have been like. More complicated or something. Something 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 to the effect would it cause me to be like, you know what? No, I'm just gonna stick with Blackstone Labs because it's like forty dollars, it's really easy, and it's just done, right? Um, but regardless, I have over I have a little bit over than what the values, you know, at the minimum should be. So technically I'm still good. Now, because of this oil analysis and the low TBN, again, this is you know, it may not be accurate because it's they, they, they're not testing for this new additive package. They're not, they're not they, they can't because they don't have the testing materials to do so or the um, whatever, right? To, to the processes to test for this new additive. Um, I think I'm going to stick between a 10 and 12.5, 12, 12,500 mile oil change interval. Um, I may just do 10 and I'll send in another sample in when I get to 30,000 miles and we'll see and compare at 10,000 versus this one, 14,200. Um, so I may do that, or I may go 12,500. I haven't decided yet. Um, I, I'm, I kind of like to keep things simple, you know, keeping at 10,000 mile oil change intervals, 
it's easy to calculate the next fuel, I mean, oil change, right? Every 10,000, so 30, 40, 50, and so forth. If, if I do it every 12, five, you know, then it's like, it's gonna be a little bit different. So instead of like 30,000, it'll be 30,205. And then I gotta calculate, you know, add another 12, five. It just gets a little more, you know, involved. Um, but we'll see. I personally think I could go 15,000 miles on this oil based on the additive package being so radically different and you can't really accurately test the TBN. You, you can't. Uh, and Blackstone Labs have admitted to that when I spoke to them. And you can call them. Call them. Talk to them about it. They flat out say that, yeah, it's, they don't, they can't really test this new additive package because they, not only them, like other oil analysis places, like it's the same thing because they just don't have the, um, I guess technology to, or the machines or whatever they need to, to test for an accurate TBN number using this oil. And this is only one oil that is radically different. So, you know, they're not going to spend the money to buy this new equipment for one oil brand when not a lot of people are sending in samples. As a matter of fact, they said like, I'm the second person to send in a sample of this oil. So they're not going to invest time, money, and effort to buy new equipment. They're not going to do that. So until, but they did say that they're, that they have talked about it. They may, they may or may not, but we'll see, you know, I'll just keep sending samples in and we'll just see what happens. But anyway, so that's, uh, that's going to be it for this video. I plan on still using Chevron Dello mainly because I have a huge supply because I bought a whole bunch right before the oil shortage hit because I knew it was coming. And, um, I plan to run this oil. I'm very happy with this oil. I'm very shocked that I haven't used any oil. Like I put in 12 quarts. When it came time to change the oil at 14,200 miles, I still had 12 quarts of oil. It was still on the full line. I was pretty shocked. That's really good. That's, that shows a high resistance in that oil. Like it resisted being burned off. I was pleasantly surprised. So anyways, hope this video has been helpful. If you want to try using this oil, by all means, but again, Check with the oil recommendation. This is recommended for the 6.7 Cummins as it meets the new uh, CES 286, which supersedes 281 or 20, 0, 81, whatever. Um, I would not recommend this for your power stroke because it doesn't have phosphorus levels of over a thousand points or whatever, right? Don't use it in your power strokes. Ford just needs to update their engines because they're, they need to update their materials because oil technology is going to continue to change and if Ford doesn't change CK4 may you know if the next five years goes by and they have a new standard let's say it's like CK5 or whatever right I assume phosphorus level is going to be pretty low by that time uh, in these new oils and you may not find an oil for your power stroke so Ford's got to do something about that they need to update and change with the times, not force oil companies to continue to have high phosphorus in their oils. So anyways, that's just my thoughts. Uh, and we'll catch you in the next video.